This is Harvard on the Map, presented by the Harvard Graduate School of Design, covering innovative ideas and thought leaders in digital cartography, earth observation, and all things geospatial, with your host, Jennifer Horowitz. Hello, and welcome to Harvard on the Map. I'm here with Winston Dry, um, who is the CPO and co-founder of Albedo. Um, I'm a huge fan of the company, the team, and I'm really excited to have you on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jennifer. Yeah, so let's hop in here. So maybe first, if you could start by telling the listeners in the Boston area a little bit more about what Albedo does um, and what your role looks like there. Yeah, so Albedo is building satellites to capture the highest resolution satellite imagery available in the commercial market. Specifically, that's 10 centimeter visible imagery, um, and that is co-collected along with two meter thermal imagery. So um, two different phenomenologies and all aboard on the same satellite. Um, specifically, I am one of the co-founders, so I, I do a lot um, and uh, it's not, I guess specifically in a in a single category, um, but my primary concern is building a a product that customers want, um, and that's you know fairly uh, nebulous with, as a pre product company um, that's uh, still you know a long ways out from launching their first satellite. But um, yeah, just really focusing on the customer, understanding their needs, um, I guess their uh, what they like about the current solution, what they dislike. Um, and hopefully bringing them a better product at the at the end of things. Yeah, well, that's very exciting. It's, it's also a, a young team, if I could say so, a very cool team, very interesting people. Um, I'm wondering, so for, for those of us within the geospatial arena who may not be as well versed on this on the Earth observation side, how does Albedo's offerings differ from, you know, a Maxar? How, do, how does it sort of what, what role does it play within that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Within the Earth observation space, um, our Im our, we're collecting visible imagery, so that's um, pretty easy to understand. Like, you know, you go to Google Maps, um, that's exactly what you see there. And hopefully we're bringing that level of resolution. So if you go to, say, a city like San Diego, um, you know, the, the imagery there uh, is usually collected from aerial means. So either a plane or, um, yeah, usually a plane. Um, and that level of imagery is uh, typically reserved for you know planes right now, um, but uh, we're hoping to offer aerial quality imagery from space. Um, so specifically, ten centimeter imagery. And you brought up the comparison to Maxar. So Maxar's uh, Worldview um, three satellite collects thirty centimeter resolution. Um, we'll be about nine times better than that at ten centimeter resolution. So. Um, for every one pixel that co they collect, we'll collect nine. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, so I, my next, that leads us to my next question, um, which I think you told me a little bit at, G, at GeoInt, which is where we met, the, um, the, about your journey to, to Albedo. And you were saying you worked within the MAPS team uh, at, at Facebook. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you were doing there and how that has sort of informed your experience at Albedo? Yeah, um, it, it was a funny and very like, we like to say serendipity a lot at Albedo because honestly, a lot of what has happened is fairly serendipitous. Um, but I, you know, I graduated from the University of Texas with a mechanical engineering degree. Um, I went to a boot camp to sort of learn some like on the job web application development skills um, and then was pretty much self-taught after that. I actually interviewed at Facebook as an iOS developer after uh, teaching myself how to program, um, you know, iOS apps uh, and switched over to more of like a research-based team. Um, my team was called Advanced Network Planning at Facebook, and we use different types of remote sensing data to plan uh, wireless mesh networks. So, um, kind of complicated but uh i on that team i was exposed to different remote sensing data sets such as lidar terrestrial and aerial lidar um and you know kind of went down the path of learning how to use different geospatial data sets so 
um, from LIDAR, starting working with digital elevation models, um, and then from there, starting to work with some other teams within Facebook um, to use that a lot of imagery. So I was working with a team called uh, World AI. Um, they actually, I think, have an office in Boston, um, or some team members in Boston. But uh, the point of that team was to take uh, Maxar is satellite imagery. So that was the first sort of exposure to satellite imagery um, for me was Maxar's uh, Vivid2 base map. Um, they were using that to do different kinds of feature detection. So I think Facebook has come out and said that they are using um, base maps to do different types of feature detection, such as roads, buildings, um, all for the purpose of dumping that back into OpenStreetMaps um, to just i think bring a higher level of fidelity to uh that that really useful database yeah that's fascinating and i didn't actually know your full journey that you were a boot camp person but i mean obviously it's not like you were not a stem person you came from epic yeah. that's really it's inspiring I, I feel like i kind of went back to school to get more cs yeah that's that's really cool yeah yeah um and sorry i i didn't connect that to albedo yeah. i guess yeah please but, yeah yeah uh so Topher and I had been friends. Um, we actually met at UT uh, through mechanical engineering, but at the inception of Albedo, we'd been friends for about 10 years. So he, we had talked about, you know, satellite imagery and when we would hang out and I guess, um, you know, just a, a natural fit. Uh, and yeah, we work well together. So that's kind of how things started. It, it took a, it took a little bit more convincing on my part because I, uh Tover was like yeah we're gonna build these satellites and they're gonna be like kind of expensive and i was like oh, i don't know there's a pandemic going on right now so um yeah. i took a little bit more convincing yeah yeah well it seems like you ended up in a great place um so you know for those of us who are not as familiar with the earth observation space were there particular resources that you found or writers or folks who were sort of influential in that space who kind of helped you understand that world a little bit better resources for example yeah yeah um i think you've already talked to one of them joe morrison i mean joe's awesome he has fantastic ideas on the industry and um you know ways to move that forward and things he's striving to do that um you know align a lot with what albedo is trying to do we're trying to make imagery broadly accessible enable the commercial market um make it a transparent purchasing process um and really get the data into the shape that um customers need it to be so that they can immediately and readily use it um so joe's been like a huge resource um other than that i think you know just reading reading medium articles how I, that sounds kind of like low-hanging fruit but yeah. to be honest like you know you you're never you never like out of things to read on medium um and you know things that you think you understand will still surprise you um and i think people spend a lot of great time um writing those articles twitter as well um i guess that's sort of adjacent but yeah yeah no, it's totally fair yeah um so last question i can keep you here all day and i genuinely would love to hang out with you if ever i find myself in austin i will definitely hit you up uh, yeah hit us up yeah um i was my last question that i asked all my interviewees um is to describe a time where you were lost whether that's geographically um as in physically lost or in your life or career and how you found your way back again yeah um this is funny because i feel like that I, I have this theory that i think for me and a lot of my friends um like young adults you know post college post whatever sort of stage that you know you're it's a very formative stage and you're entering the working world or like reality sort of hits you it's like this oh my god i'm stuck doing this forever phase um and at the time like i felt i was doing something that i didn't want to do so i I actually worked at Dell for a bit um, and I quit very, very fast because I got there and I was like, this is exactly what I don't want to do. And I spent a good amount of time just like running towards what I do want to do 
Um, I don't know. This is a kind of a bad answer, but no, it's not a real bad answer. I think <laughs> there, I think, I guess one thing is just like trust your gut. Like if it feels inherently wrong, if it's like sucking your soul away to do something, um, obviously if it's within your means to not do that, then okay. don't do that. Um, and then run towards something that you do want to do. And it doesn't have to be something that you'll do forever. And I think that was sort of that like despair I felt. It was like, oh, I'm doing, I'm stuck doing this for the rest of my life. And there are other like associated feelings where it's like, I'm stuck doing this one thing that I don't want to do. And it is, and the next thing I do has to be like something that I do for a really long time. Um, I don't think you have to put, it is good to put a lot of thought in it, but if you're like kind of in the throes of that, um, I would say just pick something and do it for a bit. And just by doing that one thing, you learn what you, you have a more informed opinion of what you do want to do and what you don't want to do. That's totally fair. Yeah. It's, a, um, it's, it's, I just, yeah, it's very relevant to my life right now. I just had a conversation with my parents about tech stuff and that people, uh -huh people sometimes are in a role for five or ten years and then they go into the next thing and for them it's a different generation so they you know they had one job for you had one job for 25 years and that was sort of what you did but it's a very different mm -hmm. world for i feel like our folks in our generation yeah yeah for better for worse like yeah. we you know we have the choice to be able to particularly with like a good skill set you can jump from industry to industry and try to find what like you know gets you out of bed in the morning um, and yeah, there are pros and cons to that, but yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the program. I really appreciate your time. I know you guys are super busy there, but, um, appreciate making time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Have a great day.